Have you ever like thought about how your body knows when to release insulin? It's actually pretty amazing. It is when you think about it, like all this stuff going on. Right. And we're going to take a deep dive today into insulin release. Looking at the microscopic level. Yeah. And we're using uh, this video from the Metabolism Made Easy channel. It's a great channel. I love it. It's got some really good explanations. Yeah. So it all starts with glucose, right? Yeah. So say you just ate like a big meal. Okay. So imagine uh, you just had a big plate of pasta or something. Ooh, yeah. Lots of carbs. Yep. Your glucose level is going to shoot up in your blood. Right. And that's where the pancreas comes in. Exactly. The pancreas is key here. It's listening specifically. You've got to be listening to all this. The beta cells in the pancreas. Uh -huh. They're the ones that are really paying it. Okay. The beta cells got it. They're like these little factories churning out insulin and storing it. Oh, so they make it. To yeah. They make it and they store it in these little packages called vesicles. Vesicles? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so these beta cells, I'm guessing they like use the glucose themselves. They do. So they're like powered by the very thing they yeah. respond to. It's really cool. They take in the glucose and they use it for energy and they break it down through this process called glycolysis. Okay, glycolysis. That sounds familiar. Yeah, you probably remember it from biology class. Vaguely. Basically, it's how glucose is broken down to make ATP. And ATP, is that like the energy? A ATP is like the energy currency of the cell. Oh, okay, got it. So if you have more glucose, you can have more glycolysis happening and you're going to make more ATP. Okay, so more glucose, more ATP makes sense. Right. And the video is saying that this is what like triggers the whole insulin release thing. Yeah, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Because it's all about this special potassium channel, channel. Yeah. in the beta cells. Got it. So when you have all this extra ATP floating around, uh -huh. it actually blocks this potassium channel. It's, it, it's like a little switch. Okay, hold on. So we got glucose, we got ATP, and the ATP is like flipping a switch hey, on hey. this potassium hey, channel. Shutting it down. Shutting it down. Okay. And that's not the end of the story. So what happens next? I mean, what's the big deal about shutting down this potassium channel? Well, that sets off a whole chain reaction. Okay. And the next big player is calcium. Calcium. Yeah. Calcium rushes into the cell. So that's how it happens. Yeah. When that potassium channel gets blocked, it changes the electrical charge across the cell membrane. And that causes calcium to flow in. Okay. And remember those little vesicles full of insulin? Yeah. The calcium is what tells them, hey, it's time to release your cargo. Wow. So it's like a direct it is. connection there. It's a very elegant system. Pretty wild. From a simple rise in glucose, you get this whole cascade of events. Yeah. You don't think about it when you're like eating your pasta. No. But it's like a whole microscopic world. Right doing its thing. It's like a well-oiled machine. It is. And, and the outline for this was saying that uh, we should talk about what happens when things go wrong. Right. Because sometimes the system doesn't work perfectly. Right. Sometimes those beta cells, they get tired. They get worn out. Oh, like they can't keep up. They can't keep up. Maybe they're not producing enough insulin. Okay. Or maybe and your body's not responding to the insulin as well as it should.